Hello and welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we're going to be taking a look at EVGA's X79 for the Win motherboard. Um, of course, our sample here is not a retail box. However, we do have some images that we've taken from EVGA's website that will be in our write-up. If you click on the link below, you'll be able to go to our website and take a look at the actual write-up on our, on our page. You'll see some of what's actually, uh, what the box will look like. It's a pretty nice box. It's got a stylish look to it, some 3D lettering looking like it's coming out, and what appears to be motherboard tracing running off of it. You know, kind of to give an indication of power. The box is black like you see here. But overall, it's pretty similar to a lot of what, you're, what we're used to seeing with motherboard boxes. But let's get past that and let's take a look at what we actually received inside of our box. And we'll go ahead and open this up here. And inside the box, this is a review unit, so of course they, uh, some of this stuff has been used before. It's not really a big deal. It's going to give you an indication of what you are going to get. You get some SATA cables. You also get a Molex to SATA power converter. You can see here. Um, you get a USB 2.0 adapter, with, which also has a FireWire adapter. These plug directly into the motherboard. You also have a USB 3.0 adapter. This plugs also directly into the motherboard and gives you two extra USB 3.0 ports. You have your I.O. shield with the now popular padding. Um, you have some another Molex connector that pushes it out to multiple eSATA as well as some uh, or SATA cables as well as some uh, additional eSATA cables. You have a flexible and large uh, SLI adapter, and you also have two three-way SLI bridges. Now the first SLI bridge is just going to be for standard. Um, this is going to give you two cards in X8 and one card in X16. But this one, it appears to be the, the type that they would normally use for a four-way SLI. However, they've left a spot open. Uh, reading some of the material and the, uh, the manual that comes with the board, it appears that this is for three-way SLI with physics. So you put that card in the center and we'll show you how this would stack up on the actual board. We do hope to, to do some testing with three-way SLI this time. And uh, we'll see how this works out with using both, uh, both adapters there. Right, underneath our box here, we're going to have the EVGA X79 for the wind motherboard wrapped in EVGA's uh, custom static bag here. We'll go ahead and get this pulled out. So as you can see, the board is quite nice. It's got a very nice look to it. EVGA has uh, always had the uh, matte black. Looking very close, you can see that their trace layout is very clean, and they've actually coated that with the same matte material. So you, the traces are not as visible as they are on mo uh, most motherboards. They're actually underneath, so what you see is you can detect them by looking at the different lines. They just show up as sort of a different texture in the actual motherboard itself. Uh, taking a look over here, the first thing we want to uh, point out is that they've actually angled the power adapter, the 24-pin power adapter, by 90 degrees, just like they have the SATA controllers. This is going to let you put your cable alongside the back plane of the case that you're using. It's going to give you a little bit more airflow across here. All right, we'll also want to look at they have their reset and power buttons, and right next to it is a uh, very flat is a flat push button. You can see that right here. That is actually a CMOS reset button. You have a four-pin uh, fan header. You have two RAM slots here as well as two here. That's going to give you a total of four. This, as we've seen before, is apparently in an attempt to make it a little bit more stable across uh, all four channels of memory. However, as of yet, we haven't been able to see that materialize in the boards that we've tested with this. Uh, taking a look at the heat sink here, this is a pretty beefy heat sink. They've got some nice fins on it. You can take a look down here. These are pretty extensive. Again, this is going to only be as effective as the amount of airflow you can get across it. You do have a lot of uh, thickness here to keep to kind of pull that heat off of your power regulators but it's still going to need a lot of airflow to make sure that this maintains its cooling, especially if you're going to push this board quite a bit. You'll also notice that EVGA gave you two 8-pin uh, ATX auxiliary connectors. This is going to just provide more power to the memory and to the CPU. The primary one is a little bit difficult to get to. It's right up against the heat sink here. This is going to make it hard to get in there. So again, as always, we recommend that you do get those extension cables. It's just going to make things easier. Now taking a quick turn here and talking about something a little bit different, if you look, you have two small chips here. These say VLI on them. What they are is that is actually a USB 3.0 hub. Each one of these is capable of taking a single USB connection and turning it into four ports. That's going to play into the number of USB 3.0 ports that we see on this board. So we'll take a quick uh, quarter turn here and we'll take a look at our peripherals. All right, We have uh, some pretty good peripherals here. You have five. X16 mechanical slots. 
and all of them are pinned out for X16 electrical. You can see that on the back of the board. They're all fully pinned out. However, when you're running SLI, you're not going to get that. Um, these two are both X16 independently. Well, as soon as you put them in SLI, you're only going to get X8. Then, of course, you have uh, this, this slot will run in X16, or one of these will run in X16, which brings us to what we were talking about with those SLI bridges. So we show you that here. If you're running this, the, the normal one, the one that we showed you, you're going to get slots 1, 2, and slot 4. That's going to run for your SLI. If you run the larger one, you're going to get slots... 1, 2, 4, and 5, or slots 1, 2, and 5. Now, looking at their layout and their product materials, what you would do is you would run this with slots 1 and 2, and then you would put your additional physics card in either, and more, most likely in slot number 4. Slot number 4 is going to be far enough away that you can still run your dual height coolers on each of these without running in, into any obstacles. So that's going to give you your best options for running uh, SLI in addition to having an uh, extra card in there just to handle your physics processing. That's NVIDIA physics, not your standard physics like Havoc or another one that relies on the CPU for its power. All right, we'll, give the, we'll take a look down here along the edge of the board. You'll notice that uh, EVGA has given you a diagnostic LED right over here. They've also given you a uh, Molex connector, which is going to provide additional PCIe power. They've given you four USB, actually three USB uh, ports. I take that back, correction. There are four USB 2.0 headers here. Three of them are covered up. You have a 1394 header, your USB 3.0, two additional fan headers, and also your USB 3.0 hub here. Uh, this right here is your BIOS selector switch. That'll let you move between the different BIOSes that are offered here. And also, um, that'll let you yeah move between your different BIOSes. Now, they do provide an onboard speaker that will give you your beep codes. Most people uh, these days don't actually use the beep codes, so you're not going to see a whole lot of use there. Um, and we also want to take a look at this heat sink. This is an enlarged heat sink that's going to cover a lot of this lower area here and should provide better cooling not only to the X79 chipset, but as well as to some of these other components, such as the Marvel uh, ATA uh, SATA uh, 3.0 connector that's down here. Uh, EVGA also has a small LED on this uh, heat shield that's right here. That'll let you, uh, you know, I, we're not exactly sure what that's going to show us, but we'll see once we get everything powered on. So that covers pretty much everything that we've got going on here. Just a brief overview, and at, at least on the physical board itself. Now we're going to turn and we're going to take a look at the actual peripheral ports. As we told you, you have more than just your standard USB 3.0. You actually have eight USB 3.0 ports on the back here in addition to two eSATA ports and your two USB 2.0 that are over here. This right here is actually a Bluetooth adapter. This Bluetooth adapter is of course part of the X79 chipset, but it's very similar to the one that ASUS uses on all of their boards and has used for quite a while, even going back into the P67 and a little bit before that. EVGA does provide a uh, multi-purpose PS2 port. This will run keyboard or mouse. You have two LAN adapters, and of course you have a Realtek chipset uh, codec that's going to give you your, your basic audio. And we'll be taking a listen to that to see exactly how well that performs. Again, I mean it's a good clean layout so far from what we're seeing, and it looks like it should do us pretty well once we start overclocking it. So we're going to go ahead and get this set up on our test bench. Again, we'll also have a complete write-up of the information we have here with some additional information about some of the smaller features that are on the board and, and as well as some photographs. So don't forget to click on the link below to take a look at the, at the full write-up if you haven't been there first. And also make sure that you like and share this if you enjoy this video. And be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date with any of the new videos that we have coming out.